Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3D Pay. And this week I've been working on my 3D printers. Um, as I noted in a previous video, I've started transitioning some of my printers over to Clipper just for something different. And I also like some of the features. I find the extendability really interesting. And one of the printers I've converted over, and there's a link to a video at the top, is my Ender 3 V2 is now running Clipper and Mainsail. As I've started exploring Clipper, one of the really neat things I found is the ability to create macros for Clipper and basically extend functionality. And I, I found this uh, GitHub repository from Dre Shra, and I'm of course butchering this name, I'm sure. Justin Shrew, and um, again, has some really awesome functionality. And these scripts are set up in such a way that they're universal, regardless of which printer I'm using them on. If I look over here under machine in mainsail, I can install these scripts and then have them be part of the update manager. So whenever there's a new release, I can go ahead and um, automatically update the scripts. So again, that's pretty cool. Um, and I, I've gone ahead and, and forked those macros so that way I could play around with them and make some changes for myself. But one of the, the really cool features that I want to point out is the ability to uh, do a fast mesh. Rather than mesh the whole, um, the whole bed of the printer, it just does a mesh for the area you're going to print it. So it makes the mesh process extremely fast. And again, just does this small area rather than the whole, uh, the whole bed. So I really like that. And again, that, that it works regardless of which printer I'm on. I don't have to make any significant changes to the scripts or to the settings. Um, and so I, since the, these macros I think I, I found are pretty useful and there's a ton of them, I'm going to go ahead and they're kept reasonably up to date. Notice as of this video, they were updated yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how to install these in your copy of Clipper and how to configure it so it shows up in the update manager. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through those steps. To get the process started, I've gone ahead and open up uh, Windows Terminal, um, PowerShell, my Windows machine. Now, it's going to be pretty much the same process if you're using a Mac. So what I'm going to do is SSH into my my uh, Raspberry Pi that's connected to my Ender 3 V2. And so I'm putting in the username, which is Pi at, and then the name of the printer. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. It's going to ask me for my Pi, the password for the Pi user. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. And now I'm on the machine. Um, so I'm logged into via SSH, the uh, Raspberry Pi connected to my Ender 3 V2. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a list of directories. And the first directory I see, I see this clipper underscore config. Now, if I switch over and take a look at the repo that I'm trying to install, if I scroll down, there's some installation instructions. And so I'm basically just going to follow these instructions. So right now, I need to CD into that clipper underscore config directory. So switching back over to my terminal, I'm going to go ahead and type cd clipper underscore config and i can do another um, ls there now you'll notice right here i have my copy of the um, macros installed but i'm going to just go show you how to install the original um, version so let's go back over to the instructions here. And what I'm going to do is just copy this statement. And what this is going to do is clone this repo, copy, and then switch back over to the terminal. Next 
that I didn't get the first G. HTTPS link to the repo. And that's going ahead. And if I hit LS, there's uh, Clipper dash macros has now been installed on my on that Raspberry Pi. So let's switch back over to, to the browser so we can actually look at the printer. And if I go ahead and hit reload, you'll notice there's the new directory. So the macros are now installed. So what I need to do for this next step is uh, go ahead and get these macros integrated into main sale here for me so I can use them. So I need to open up the printer that config and I'm going to scroll down here. In mine, I have a macro section. So I'm going to scroll right there. And here is the clipper setup. And I can just go ahead and hit copy. Hit and copy here. And then I'll switch back over and go ahead and paste this into my uh, macro section on my printer.config. And what this is doing is basically there's a section in here. If you read through the instructions of um, different settings you can use and global variables you can set so you can override the defaults. And then um, there's also some code down here if you're using this in Fluid to get that to work. And I'm just going to hit Save and Restart. And so that's now restarting Clipper for me. And this will take a minute. And I'm getting a load length error. Now I noticed that last night. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to fix that. So what I did was the load length is, I think, by default, 50. And I don't have that set in my printer.config. So I'm just going to go up here, down here, sorry, down. And there's this sign right here, variable load length. And I'm just going to change this to 50. And do a save and restart. So that's restarted. Now, I also mentioned that cool feature to only probe the area of the bed um, where you have the, um, where your model is. So I'm going to go back over here and let's activate that feature as well. Optimize that one. So I'm going to go ahead here and uncomment that line. And so that turns that function on. Clipper's restarting. There we go. So Clipper's now restarting. So um, next time I do a, a probe on the bed, it's just going to just going to probe um, where the model is. Um, so it's much quicker and I think much more exact. So we have that. So all it's installed. And if I scroll down, you'll see all the various functions you can do and different macros this is added. And again, read through the documentation. There, there's just so much here and so many handy functions. So what I'm going to do is I, I have another step here. If I go over to machine, I don't see the ability to update the screen here or the scripts in the update manager. So let's go ahead and do that step. So I've scrolled down in the documentation here. And here's this Moonraker config. So I'm going to go ahead and do this a simple way. Let's copy it and then go back over to my printer. And I'm going to open up. Moonraker config. There it is, Moonraker config. So I'm opening that file. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to paste that code in there. So this will add the Clipper macros update function. Hit restart and this will take a minute. And if I look, um, up to date, but there's the right there, the update function. And whenever that repo's updated and there's a new version, I have the ability just to click one button and update those functions. So this has this all set up 
in my in main sale and then in my clipper install so my next step is to go over and configure my slicers so i'll go ahead and show you how to do that switching over and looking at the documentation for uh, the extension you'll notice there's documentation for Prusa Slicer and Super Slicer. I've re recently switched over to Super Slicer because Cura was crashing on me pretty regularly, and I just wasn't finding it usable. Pretty much ever since they upgraded to Cura 5, it's just after about five, 10 minutes or adjusting settings, I would have a crash and have to restart the program. And so I just grew frustrated with that. So. But to go ahead and activate these scripts, to leverage them in my prints. And I need to say this too, because these scripts are dynamic, I should be able to, to just leverage these over and over again. And even if I update the scripts, they should be able, old uh, G code files that I've generated still should work for the most part. So again, that's pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is, Go over to super slicer and i'll start here and so i'll go to printer settings and custom g code and what i'm going to do is just following the documentation cut and paste each one of these sections into so i'm going to copy the start g code so i'll copy that go over to super slicer and just paste that in here. And I'll do that for the encode, the um, before layer change G code, and the after layer G code. Again, just following right along with the documentation. So I have that set up, I hit save. Now, anytime I go ahead and slice a model, leverage these scripts, and again, just probe that bed in that smaller area. Um, so again, pretty cool stuff. Now for Cura, it's a little bit more complicated and I have not gotten this work perfectly. And again, it's a little less important to me. So Cura um, is basically a pain in the butt. Um, you need to go ahead and activate the post-processing script in Cura. To enable the post process script, you go up and just make sure it's turned on in extensions, then you're going to hit modify G code. That'll bring up this screen. And I have several scripts that need to be created. There's going to be a two search replace, a insert at layer change, and a search replace. To add a script, you go down here and you click in case of search and replace, I click search and replace and then fill out these values. Pay, cut and paste this code into um, those areas. So basically, I'm just cutting and pasting this code directly into those scripts. They need to be placed in this order. So I'll do a search and replace with this code. Next, underneath that search and replace with this code, and insert it layer change, and then lastly, another search and replace. Now, I'm looking at a different way of doing this because, it, like I said, seems like a, a bit of a hassle so i'm messing around that's one of the ways to find me to work but um, you can go ahead and give this a, a shot see what you think um, overall like i said these scripts are pretty awesome and i think really fun to play with and adds a lot of cool functionality so this is mike from minimal 3dp i realize i went over this pretty quickly if you have any questions please post them in the comments if you like what I'm doing, please give me a like or, or a follow. Um, I'd appreciate any feedback or questions, and I try to answer everybody to the best of my ability. Um, again, I want to thank you for your time. Hope you have a great day.